Hello everyone, and welcome to the first ever Access Ability Summer Showcase, sponsored by I Need Diverse Games. I'm your host, Laura. I'm a white woman with bright blue hair, shaved on one side, wearing a plain black dress, standing in front of a blue, lightly animated backdrop. You are, I'm that's a true. Disabled gamer, that's all with true. a number of disabilities that impact things like my memory, sensory processing, coordination, focus, and hearing. And as such, I wanted to create a space during the week of E3 slash Summer Games Fest slash whatever we're calling the deluge of Summer Game Announcement live streams this year, where disabled gamers could be confident. Uh, there are multiple different versions of this showcase, um, so that it's all inclusive. Uh, you can see here that, oh, you can see here, oh. Accessibility Showcase uh, 2023. So you can see that there's a bunch of different versions of this show. You're just going to... There! Okay, there. See, ASL interpreted. There's a bunch of different versions of this showcase with, like, people and stuff. Ooh. <laughs> the game trailer seemed wow. interesting to them. No! They would know upfront if the game was likely to be playable by them or not when it releases. Basically, I want this to be a space where disabled gamers can get in on the excitement of finding out about new and upcoming video games, with less risk of finding out later that a cool looking game that you've seen today isn't going to be something that you can play when it actually releases. Alongside trailers for recently released and upcoming video games, you'll also be hearing stories from disabled gamers about what accessibility means to them, and from disabled game developers about how they approached creating the kinds of accessible designs that they personally need when gaming. Not every video game shown here today is going to be playable by every disabled gamer. Disability is often a spectrum of overlapping distinct needs, and it's very difficult to make one game that is accessible to everyone. But my hope is that, by the end of this roughly 40 minute long showcase, you'll see at least one game that looks cool and meets your specific accessibility needs. So, without any further introduction, Let's jump into the first batch of game trailers. I'm here. Mythrex. Mythrex. Ambrosia Island is developed by Polygon Treehouse and published by Whitethorn Games. In Mythrex, you play as Alex, who has been shipwrecked on an island inhabited by the Greek gods. You'll need to befriend them and help get their memories back to uncover the mystery of Ambrosia Island. Making friends is integral to the gameplay of Mythrex. <laughs> You'll get to know the gods by talking to and learning about Same. them. Naturally, many mm -hmm. features in Mythrex help make reading the dialogue accessible. God, I looked. I'm not going to lie to you. I looked instantly. It was the first place my brain, my, my eyes looked. Uh, yeah, I just, it, was, I, it, it was the first place. I'm not even going to front. Like, my eyes went right to it. Like, I just like... choose to press a button to confirm reading or allow the dialogue to autoplay at a fast, medium, or slow pace. The dialogue... Who didn't? Like, how couldn't you? ...further by having the text scroll or by having it show up all at once. Track objectives around the island... Was that Hermes? I thought that was Cupid. ...the Dex that boasts a high-contrast journal and inventory system. The Ambrosia Dex also has a radar function that uses sound effects, visuals, and haptics to let you know when you're close to finding a hidden treasure. It was Hermes? Okay. Ambrosia Island is alive with discoveries, sights, and sounds... Yeah, I was too distracted. ...and little creatures. You'll explore the island using a stable, dynamic tracking camera and can enhance your experience by toggling haptics or button press sprint. You can even customize your entire playthrough with full button remapping. And you won't need sound to enjoy the ambiance of Ambrosia Island. Mythrect includes captions for ambient and environment sound effects so you can feel immersed in the vibrant surroundings with or without sound. Very cool. Thank you for watching, and we can't wait to see you on the sun-kissed beaches in Mythrect Ambrosia Island. Mythrect. Welcome to Sky Tales, a wonderful world full of gentle puzzles to solve. Play as Sky, the friendly dragon, and help oh. out your friends and neighbors. Or help You're the coasting crew set sail and discover long lost treasure at the bottom of the sea. Take a break between puzzles and make music with magical instruments 
stronger. the ear with melodies and I was not expecting anything, Nintendo. I'm not going to lie to you. And there's no need to rush. Play at your own pace. Explore the valleys of Avishire, Raina Falls, Kuston, and Wisbridge in your own time. Accessibility is at the heart of Sky Tales. Very cool. Thing looks stupid. Yeah, this game looks like trash. <laughs> but like, you know, it's each throw and I'm sure it's for somebody. With features that let you shape the game to meet your needs. Express yourself by collecting fabulous outfits from all corners of the world. Sky Tales, your playful world awaits. How now? Hi, I'm Radas. I'm a disabled Hi, creator. Hi, Radas. I like your name. I'm a white woman with brown hair, wearing a gray t-shirt with white outside seams. I love, I love that they're describing it. Uh, Shogun, CFS, Fibro, to name a few, which leave me with both mobility and cognitive accessibility related needs. I really appreciate games that give me the ability to remove button mashing, or set longer windows on reaction time events, um, and really any kind of decent quest log or map just so I don't get too lost in the world. Uh, this next game not only has accessibility features that are beneficial for me, but it also just looks awesome. The vibrant pixel art, the chiptune soundtrack, and varied boss fights are a perfect accompaniment to a really cool lesbian love story. This is Boss Game, The Final Boss is My Heart. Boss Game, The Final hey Boss is My, my Heart. My name is Lily Valine, and I'm the lead developer of Boss Game, The Final Boss is My Heart. What a name. Boss Game is a lesbian romance boss rush. You play as Sophie and Anna, two broke girlfriends who hunt devils to pay the rent. The game features lightning fast, rhythmic boss battles in a unique two hero battle system. Sophie and Anna fight simultaneously in order to build combos, keep each other alive, and unleash super attacks. In between boss fights, you'll flirt with your girlfriend, fight your corrupt employer, and uncover the dark secrets of Mammon City, all while texting friends and enemies. Boss Game is all about using the power of love to defeat huge, ridiculous bosses. Because of the focus on hectic battles, I knew right away that I wanted to include a wide variety of gameplay options. Boss Game includes several different ways to adjust the experience and challenge, including granular settings for things like gameplay speed and bonus hero damage. These settings can be changed in large or small increments. Crime the boss, the final the crime is my heart. Will cause Sophie and Anna to activate their shields automatically upon taking damage, which reduces the need for quick reactions. The invincibility option makes it impossible to lose a battle, hey, dude, which allows players to avoid reaching a dead end. I've added a variety of different options so that people can experiment and find what works best for them. I found that players are very capable of using these settings to create an engaging level of gameplay that suits their ability and how they like to play. Boss Game, The Final Boss is My Heart, is out now on Android and iOS, and will be released this July on Steam and itch.io. Thank you so much for joining me. Please have a lovely day, and enjoy the rest of the showcase. Hello, my name is Luis Alonso, and I'm the game developer for Space. Too into that one. I'm here today to talk to you about how I tackle the task of accessibility. What most people don't know about me is that I'm actually physically disabled myself, so I take accessibility very seriously. Despite being a triple amputee, I can't claim to be an expert in all forms of accessibility, but I can break down how I approach making Spaceboat as accessible as possible. As a result, I made sure that the game could be played comfortably with a controller and without the retrospect, need for how you doing? combinations for successful game progression. As someone who has beaten every Soulsborne game in existence, but cannot play games like Metroid Dread, I can tell you this. I love the Love Boat soundtrack right now. When people with cerebral palsy reached out to let us know they enjoyed playing the game, I knew that at least on that front, I'd been successful. Now let's consider people with hearing disabilities. Since Space Boat is a narrative heavy game, it was important to make it possible to read every voice line that was spoken. As a result, I added subtitles when full dialogue text boxes were not shown. For the visually impaired, I ran the game with multiple simulated color blindness types, 
and realized that the bright, colorful, and high contrast art direction worked rather effectively. Cool. In the case of the most common types of color blindness, like Deuteranopia, it actually turned into an advantage since key markers would pop out. Recently, we added more text for those with extreme uncommon types of color blindness or game mechanics that rely too much on colors. If you're watching this and think we could improve Spaceboat's accessibility, please contact us at contact at recombobulator.ca. Thank you. Hey, I'm Carrie. I'm the Senior Designer of Accessibility at Rebellion, and I'm here to chat a bit about Sniper Elite 5. Sniper Elite 5 launched Why are last year, all of them the describing themselves, Elite though? And Rebellion game to date. One of our core pillars of the game is being able to play your own way, as we believe that anyone can be an elite. I joined at the end of the project, and there were already a great range of accessibility options and considerations that had gone into the game. Things like clear subtitles with speaker names, aim assists, and a highly customizable difficulty. Since release, we were able because to... Some of them are big. <laughs> it's okay. right. updates, like aim toggle, Calm it down. Movement, auto traversal options, and colorblind palettes. Through our Discord channel, we've been able to get a lot of feedback that's really helped us to address the barriers that our players were facing, and we have a range of ways to get in touch if you have any feedback for future titles. That's what we absolutely love, because there should be nothing about us without us. Now anybody can blow off Hitler's balls. On our new accessibility page found at rebellion.com forward slash accessibility forward slash sniper dash elite dash five. There's also a link to give your own feedback or join our Discord. We're proud to support right, the Accessibility Summer Showcase, and as part of that, we've donated some Sniper Elite 5 keys for a giveaway. So email laurakbuzzofficial at gmail.com before midnight BST on Friday the 16th of June to enter a random draw for a game key. Give your email the subject line Sniper Elite Giveaway, and please name your platform of choice. Good luck, Snipers. Good luck, Snipers. Hi, I'm Tabby, and I'm the UX Director at Mighty L Studios. Hi, Tabby. Our newest title, A Night in the Attic, gave our team a really unique opportunity to work with accessibility features in VR, and I'd like to share some of them with you. VR. Using the game accessibility guidelines and testing with Able Gamers player panels, we developed A Night in the Attic with some great features in mind. Some features we've added to reduce cognitive load on our players are tutorials with button glyphs and controller movements, a book of tool actions which unlock as you progress and which you can access anytime, player-controlled dialogue progression that lets you know where in space the dialogue is taking place, and levels that are about 5 to 15 minutes long to enable frequent breaks. To help with visual accessibility, we've used captions for illustrated manuscripts and text-only dialogue, a high contrast and easy-to-read font, UI elements that you can grab and move around to enhance readability, and no information is conveyed through color alone. The audio in A Night in the Attic features independently controlled levels for music and sound effects, plus you can toggle monoral or binaural sound and haptic feedback for actions. Finally, physical Man, I imagine, uh, has been a really interesting challenge in VR. VR in is attic, about as least accessible as it gets, huh? Gameplay, keeping actions within an arm's length and minimal requirement to bend or twist. There are three ways to control Guinevere one-handed tilt, two-handed tilt, or with either analog stick. By incorporating best practices and playtesting feedback where possible, we've worked hard to make sure A Night in the Attic is a comfortable and enjoyable experience for our players. Hi, I'm the developer of Upheaval, a text-based open-world fantasy adventure game. In just 30 in-game days, the enigmatic magician will arrive. You have until then to track down magical treasures and aid or interfere with people and factions that surround your small village. Upheaval is turn-based, so you can always take as much time as you want to plan your next move. And if the in-game time limit of 30 days is too I short, never thought about turn-based turn being very accessible. as many in-game days as you want to explore everything the game has to offer. You can play Upheaval completely using just your keyboard or using just your mouse or touchscreen. For blind players, the console version of Upheaval supports screen readers like NVDA and includes full text descriptions of the graphical version's important visual elements. You can play Upheaval in windowed or full screen. It's literally just a text-based adventure. Dark mode or in light mode, and with or without background graphics. You can adjust volume for music, ambiance, cool. and sound effects separately to get the sound experience you want. You can play Upheaval's free demo and early access alpha right now on itch.io, or wishlist Upheaval on Steam to get an email when the full version is released. If you have any questions hey, about accessibility or any issues accessing Upheaval, 
Join the Discord to chat with me at upheavalgame.com slash Discord. Very cool. Hi there, everyone. My name is Revia, and I'm a disabled hey, Ray, how you doing? Ill content creator from Norway. I'm a 30-year-old woman sitting in my really co Whoops. cozy Sorry, I was moving the subtitles. Room. I have red hair, I have black heavy eyeliner, and I have a lavender knitted sweater. It's a I very nice lavender knitted sweater, too. Life. And due to this, accessibility is something that... Hell yeah. That is really dear to my heart. I'm born with something called cerebral palsy, and later in life, I've gotten a bunch more of diagnostic, some of them like PTSD and rheumatoid arthritis. All of these problems affect my everyday life, mostly in the form of like brain fog, forgetfulness, spasms, tremors, a lot of pain, and a bunch of fatigue. I am lucky enough though to have medication that keeps my immune system at bay, but if I have a bad day, I am dependent on accessibility to be able to play my favorite games. That can be things like puzzle guides, difficulty modes, the ability to pause the game whenever, or the ability to switch between a controller or a keyboard, or just good tutorials in-game. And this is why I am honored to introduce this next game that not only thought about my need for be able to switch between different controllers, but also make sure that a player never loses a level and is always able to progress in a story. This is Princess Farmer by White Thorn Games and Sam. Oh, I know that game. Princess Farmer is a match three visual novel with lots of queer and diverse representation created with accessibility in mind. Charlene, the game designer, artist, and story creator of the game, injured her hands a few years ago. One of the things that helped keep her spirits up while she healed was playing Switch games with one hand. She decided that she wanted to make a game that was easy to pick up and play with just one hand. One of Princess I don't know if, main accessibility features I know Farmer is in the tile, but I don't know if this is really a farming sim. Not have to think about what they're doing. I don't know. Allows players to it's a match a three game. I don't know. I don't know. If a player wants a challenge, planting Plant and stuff. Yeah, but it's that's not what a farming sim is. Matches. There's Puzzle Bunny. And for those players who just can't make up their mind, Balance Bunny combines the two. The game will never punish you. The worst that can happen is that Gaia will be slightly less thrilled when you finish a level, and reward you with fewer heart coins. But you'll still advance and have many more chances to make Mother Gaia bounce with glee. There are about a zillion ways to control Princess Farmer. Multiple buttons work on game pads, the arrow or WASD keys on the keyboard, and on mobile, you can either tap- hurts my eyes, it's very saturated. There are so many settings to make your time in Gaia's Valley as suited to your needs as possible, including haptic control, separate audio channels, high contrast for visibility, Visual cues that don't rely on just color, font control, no screen shake, and optional match flashing. Most of all, we really just want players to enjoy the warm hug that is Princess Farmer. The story is lighthearted and filled with mystery, cheeky flirting, and supportive friends who know you're doing your best. You'll always find a cheerful welcome in Gaia's Valley. Botany Manor is a first-person puzzle game Sheesh. developed right to the by next one, huh? Studios and published by Whitethorn Games. You play as Arabella Green, a retired botanist living in a beautiful, picturesque manor. I don't think so, Quack. During the manor, you'll discover clues and research that will help you unlock the mysteries of forgotten flora. Admire the manor through Arabella's eyes with field of view, motion sensitivity, and camera smoothing sliders. It's not what a farming sim controls is, help ensure though. you have a familiar experience. Inspect postcards, books, posters, and more around the manor for information about your plants. I guess the better Plans word would be life text sim. Overlays can assist with the details that may be hard to see in your playing environment. The overlay is a high contrast, sans serif text overlay that displays on screen. You don't need to rush your time in Botany Manor. There are no time limits to solve puzzles, so feel free to explore the halls and gardens. When I say farming stay. sim, I mean if you life do, sim. However, feel the rush of being on the brink of a discovery. You can toggle sprint with a like a star do or a animal Bunny crossing Manor has an optional single stick you get the idea allows you to play using a single analog stick for movement 
You'll have a toggle or hold option for a look around view that you can use to stand still while you use the analog stick to observe your surroundings instead of move. Here, we're using single stick mode and have the camera customization set to increase your field of view and camera smoothness. Very cool. Take your time researching, relaxing, and uncovering the mysteries of long lost flora in Botany Manor. Not a lot of hits for me this showcase, Hi, but everyone. I'm not the target no, audience. Okay. Thank you so much for being here and watching the very first Access Ability Summer Showcase. I would like to take a quick moment at this point in the showcase to thank I Need Diverse Games, whose sponsorship of the showcase's debut year has made it possible to commission art assets for the event, as well as creating American Sign Language, British Sign Language, and audio described versions of the presentation. We've got a bunch of games still to showcase today, but I want to take some time to say a quick thank you as well to all of the developers who brought games along to the showcase today. This is the event's first year, and I appreciate every game developer who took the time to take a chance and be involved in a debut event like this. The hope is that we can make the Access Ability Summer Showcase an annual event going forward, growing the scope and scale of the event over time. Thank you so much for being here from the start, supporting what we're trying to build. Anyway, you're here for game trailers and news, so let's get back into things, starting with one of 2023's most impressive examples of accessibility improvements that were added in a post-launch update. So these are post-launch, these aren't... This day started like any games. other. Judged for your sins. No! no! A true nightmare. Have you ever murdered someone? What? Answer the question! Hello, I'm Fabrice from Cocat, a French solo game developer. For six years I've been making Brock the Investigator, which combines a narrative adventure game with beat'em up action. Brock offers a wide say range hello. of accessibility features, in particular for blind hello. gamers. The full game is voiced, including hotspots, menus, specific tutorials and audio de descriptions were added. Before this project, I had no idea there was no big adventure game like this playable for visually impaired gamers, so I'm pleased more players are now able to enjoy it. This was really fun to implement too. Brock is available now on PC and consoles, and you can try the demo on all platforms. Hi, my name is Thomas Tvorak. Hi, also Thomas. Known as Lirin. Hey, I was Lirin. working on Brock the Investigator as an accessibility consultant. This is my first project on such a large scale, and I can tell you this was a really, really beautiful adventure. Mostly, I was working on text-to-speech and how to improve combat and puzzles for the blind people. While Calcat did the magic based on my feedback and my work. And I hope you've enjoyed Brock the Investigator, and if not, go and grab it. This go is and a grab really, it. really fantastic game <laughs> with excellent voice acting, story, and music. And I hope you like the accessibility features we've implemented. Hello, I'm Onion Blaze, and I'm currently working on a game called Human. Hi, Onion Blaze. It's a short everyday life adventure of two school Welcome kids back, Dumpling. How's your nap? Town, making friends with a bunch of lively people and creating unforgettable memories. The game's story is split into small bite-sized episodes where you can explore, learn more about the characters, and find collectibles for minigames. Or you can just sit around and relax with cats and dogs. Based on how you spend your days, the main character's personalities will slowly develop, changing cool. how they interact with the world. Moving your character in the game can be done either manually, via keyboard or controller, or by clicking on interactable icons with a mouse. So far, the game allows clipboard-based text-to-speech for most of its systems, with proper support for it planned before release. There's also audio subtitles, audio descriptions, and separate audio volumes for background music, Dog ambient talks. sounds, and sound effects. Speed or difficulty options for dialogues, in-game time, or minigames are also present, alongside various screening graphic settings like window type, brightness, shadow and particle quality, camera motion, and many more. 
there's still a lot of things to work on before the game is finished, but some plans. I thought these games were already out! UI size and color settings, a simple map, event guides and recaps, full controller mapping, and more limited control options, like being able to play with just one button or by making any sound with a microphone. Himmy oh, is cool. currently planned for Windows, Mac, and Linux, both on Itch and Steam. I'm designing the game to be as accessible as I can with my current resources, so if you're interested and would like to see more of it, please share it to your friends, wishlist it on Steam, or become a member on Coffee, where I share frequent updates about Himig and other things. Thank you, stay safe, and have a good day. Hi, I'm Vivek Garhill. Hi, Vivek! An accessibility consultant and journalist. Gaming is an integral part of my DNA. It's a vital coping mechanism for living with the challenges of neutral muscular dystrophy. Gaming gives me the freedom to meet aliens, become a superhero. I would like to meet aliens. Or explore environments that I would never be able to experience. Ultimately, gaming brings me joy. Accessibility options unlock my potential showcasing my abilities instead of highlighting my limitations I mean, yeah. by removing any unnecessary barriers recently Star Wars Jedi Survivor had good accessibility design it included full button remapping and core accessibility feature I require so that controls are positioned comfortably to deal with my limited reach and dexterity. Now, yeah, meanwhile, it wasn't very accessible to me. It me ran like such shit. Complete. Intense traversal gameplay. I have the skills to complete the task, but I have slower reaction times. Accessibility manages this difference and reduces frustration. On a higher level, accessibility is an integral technically being aspect of game design without which game developers are alienated a key user base game developers should collaborate with accessibility consultants as lived experiences are vital can provide and progress innovation as the accessibility saying goes don't do anything about us without us. Can you retain your humanity while fighting against the corporate biotech conspiracy? This is Solid State, a 3D choice driven cyberpunk and hope punk visual novel. Play Solace. as the young hacker Chloe who confronts political plots as she fights for her friends and her city. Your choices in building up relationships and communities can revolutionize into more or less freedoms and human rights. In a game of 31 fully illustrated characters, you can romance Torrent, a local who shares Chloe's rare intuitive hacking abilities, Swaley, a community leader who grapples with expectations on different levels of governance, and Alden, an old flame who was Chloe's first love in university. Chloe's hacking allows her to take on another person's identity and read their encrypted data. With such abilities, what does it mean to speak your truth responsibly? 
In a world where humanity's rights are up on the chopping board, yeah, do be moving around a lot. Greed, will Chloe's actions incite violent backlash or bloom into hope? All accessibility features can be toggled at any time. We have a toggle for open dyslexic font for all of our text to make our game more readable. There is a full history log of previously read text for each scene. Text speed can be adjusted. There is a selection of highlight colors to show which character is speaking, which aids with visual legibility and color blindness. There is no time limits in making choices in game, and there are no flashing lights. Hell yeah! Steam and Xbox in 2023. Your choices mobilized. Is this going on live or is this a replay? Yeah, I mean, Hi, I'm talking She's live. <laughs> My friend Laura Kate asked me to stop. The showcase isn't live, no. A brief story about why accessibility matters to How me. How you doing, Groovy well, Ice Man? There's obviously a lot of stories and they take a lot of time, so I'm going to try to tell you the shortest story that I know that made a difference in my life. A long time ago, young Steve really, really enjoyed hanging out with his friends. He was uh, a very not social kid uh young steve had no idea how to talk to people or how to make friends or was scared of being made fun of in so many ways but uh the one thing i was not scared of hey was dude, groovy playing video games well i enjoyed playing games but i always did them alone and my Forgot friends were kind of going in the opposite direction in high Yo! school they stopped wanting to go play games and wanted to go hell yeah the steve world. and they wanted to go out and enjoy hotel parties away Good from taste the in animals. they wanted to go to the clubs for under 18s and they wanted to have fun in the real world but the problem was outside of the club was my mortal enemy the single stare really annoying thing I could not get over because apparently ramps weren't built back in 1992. Anyway, the thing <laughs> is, okay. uh, I had a friend who knew that I was struggling with this and because of that, uh, invited me over to his place and despite the fact that he also had the same invites to go to these parties and whatnot, would bring me over to his house, and which was also inaccessible with another stair, staircases, you know, and uh, would bring out his Nintendo to his garage, and we would sit out in his garage, and we Steven's would... Steven's a good bean. I, I mean, I've been following him around for, uh, years. our connection point was that he took the time and understanding to realize that I was being left out of our friendship circle, that I had always been included in, not purposely, but because people didn't realize that wheelchairs couldn't go where they wanted me to be able to go, and... He found a way around that by introducing me to video games, by keeping me in video games as a social aspect. And so, in his garage, we would sit and play Mortal Kombat fighting games, and we would laugh at each other, getting pwned and whatever else you got back in the 1990s. And uh, we stayed connected through all those years uh, because video games allowed us to stay despite a hard time. And I think everyone should have opportunities where Maybe life is boxing you out a little bit, and your disabilities are getting in the way of things that you'd otherwise really enjoy. Well, in the world of video games, it shouldn't be like that. We can put accessibility in games, and having the ability to play games, no matter where you are, is a super important part of remaining accessible. I've heard of this game. Hearted and wholesome 3D narrative driven adventure about coming to terms with grief and recapturing the freedom of exploring nature. You play as Tyke, who is revisiting a beloved childhood holiday destination, Pine Hearts, to overcome the physical and mental mountain set before him. Steven Spawn is a good bean. All of you guys, you guys should go look him up. He's, he, he's been uh, us, that includes in the content creation space for, for quite a while. He, he's a good bean. We took part in an inclusive design accelerator in 2022. He's a big voice for accessibility in gaming nowadays. Design practices into the culture he runs, um, I think it's called Able Gamers. Concern for our focus group arose around the need I believe, to have I believe clear he runs Able Gamers. Of what accessibility options were available and where to find them. We have chosen to address this in two ways. Firstly, by creating a dedicated accessibility onboarding flow for first time players, where they can set a few basic accessibility options before they jump into gameplay. 
We also aimed to provide immediate and quick access to the full suite of options from our settings menu by housing them under a dedicated accessibility heading. Currently, we have around 10 settings planned for release with two in the development phase right now. These include Color blocking, which applies block colors to key characters and interactable elements, making them easier to identify against a desaturated background palette. Simplified controls, which removes inputs that require prolonged or timed button presses with simpler single button no, presses. I, I thought he just meant like a Chuck E. Cheese. I thought that's what he meant. Players with joint pain or upper body dexterity limitations. Our future plans include options for high like contrast and highlight interactable modes, I was settings for scaling UI and fonts and for changing font styles, as well as options for turning on contextual subtitles for animated cutscenes and full controller remapping support. Beyond Pinehearts, we're also focused on developing an approach to sustainably delivering accessibility across all of our future games. As a small indie development studio, finding time and resources to invest in developing solutions to some of the accessibility challenges we face can be difficult. So we wanted to find a way to carry effort from project to project through our own internal settings and accessibility toolkit. The settings and accessibility... This showcase is cool. Is I'm glad this exists engine, now. Which are I hope Laura does this again next year. ...framework for settings that can be easily ported across projects. This also gives us access to developer-facing settings, which can help us to identify and reduce accessibility barriers as we go through development. An example of this is our color blindness filters, which allow artists and QA to turn on specific filters while testing the game, making it easier to identify issues with contrast and the readability of characters and interactables against background elements. Pinehearts will launch in early 2024 on Steam and Switch, but you can follow our progress in the meantime via our Twitter and Steam pages. I've seen Pinehearts around for quite a while. Nor sports? Nor. This VR? Yeah. Wait, did I just say what it was? Hang on. Go back, I need to see the title. Blink. I'm detecting. Blink in the vacuum of space. Okay. I guess blink. Autistic people love playing games, but games aren't designed for autistic people. They can be too loud, they can be too bright, they can be too stressful. Welcome to Space Station North. I recognize Allison Lane. Where the groups have got loose after a lab accident. You have to Fucking use your. Lady, I mean, it's true. To help friendly robot Blink recapture them before Mr. North finds out. The game is full of features to help autistic people enjoy the game. There's no fail state, no stressful time limits. You can skip challenges, repeat tasks, and go at your own speed. If you get overstimulated, hit the smartwatch and come straight out of the game to a calm space where you can recover. Then That's begin sick. the game when you're ready. There's an accessibility menu to fine tune the game to your particular sensitivities, and a multitude of other features designed into every level. She Blink just meant like a lot of games aren't designed for autistic, for autistic people in mind, such as not having like a. Uh, audio compression options to lower loud uh, audio while also raising low audio to make it so you can hear better or like uh, overstimulation via visual cues and stuff like that. That's what she meant. It, she just meant that video games aren't designed well for, for a lot of autistic people. She didn't mean it in a rude way of like fucking the, the autistic people can't enjoy video. Like she didn't mean it like that. She just meant like People get overstimulated, and uh, video games aren't designed with that in mind. Um, be that audio overstimulation or uh, video overstimulation. Um, and th that's what she meant by that. She didn't mean, like, it in a rude way. Autistic people are proud of their autism. It isn't something that needs to be fixed. It's, it's a superpower! That that's why we've created Blink in the Vacuum of Space. Wow, boobs. So ominous. Blink and the <laughs>
vacuum of space. If you enjoy video games, I'm telling mom. So, let's get to it, shall we? We're nearing the end of the Accessibility Summer Showcase 2023, with the next trailer being our last one of the day, announcing a release date for a game that a lot of people in the gaming accessibility space have been looking forward to for the past few months. All that remains to be said is thank you to every game developer out there that's taking the fight for improved accessibility seriously, every disabled gamer that's speaking out about their experiences, and to everyone who tuned in today to watch the showcase. Love this tattoo you can right find here. out oh, more gone. about the games that were shown during today's showcase by checking out access-ability.uk, where we will have links to all of the day's trailers, as well as to every game that was showcased. I hope you all enjoy our final announcement, and hopefully we'll see you all again next year. Hi everyone, I am Sightless Combat, accessibility Hi, Sightless consultant, Combat. gamer without sight, and content creator. Now, if you're wondering why I use the term gamer without sight, I use it because legal blindness, often just shortened to being blind, can and often does include usable and or residual vision, which I've never had. It's basically a way of me saying, I can see absolutely nothing at all. And that okay. brings us to a very okay. interesting point. I'm really, right. really glad to be here. Thank you so much to the organizers for letting me participate in this event. It's an absolute privilege and an honor. Uh, but I'm here to introduce for someone who can't see in the lineup a fantastic this room looks immaculate is from a genre that a lot of people would think you can't right play without being able to see namely a point and click you can't game. see and it but his room looks great blossom which has been uh, rumored and hinted at and demoed for a number of years in various fashions and finally the amazing folks at softly studios are I mean like am I wrong? And I am so excited. It looks it. great. Partly because I'm in the credits, but also because it's going to be a game that is fully playable without the need for sighted assistance in any capacity, which is always a fantastic thing to see when it's executed as well as this game does it. So without further ado, here is the... I've been looking at that gold gun this whole time. Yeah, the Lancer. From Softleaf Studios. It looks fucking sick. Hi, everyone. My what a thing for me to hear. Bradley, it looks great. The director of Soft How you doing, Studios. dude? There might be an ad that Today, plays in a second. I, I can't stop excited it. excited to be sharing a quick overview of the accessibility of our game, Stories of Blossom. I didn't mean anything bad From by what I said. I just think his new room looks good. has been our main goal. So we've been working I don't want to offend anybody. From the disabled and neurodiverse communities to help us remove barriers from our game. A lot of this work has been baked into the experience itself, such as the readability of each dialogue line, the design of our puzzles, and how we lay out information and our menus. We also have a large array of accessibility options that you can use to tweak the experience to your liking. Very ASMR. For a full rundown of those, please visit our updated accessibilities page at softleafstudios.com. And now I am thrilled to announce we have a new trailer. I believe I have a story that could help. I believe. I wonder what she's getting up to. It looked like they could use some help and lots of it. Let's see what we can do about that. She came across a planet full of little fungi people. Hello, little fella. Hmm. I better get out of here before he realizes. There once was a pirate that sailed the seven seas. And wore a pink tutu. And wore a pink tutu. <laughs> oh, look! Hidden treasure! In the backpack it goes. You see, my dear, you have no need to worry. August 16th, cute little, uh, How many pastel game. will it take to make an octopus laugh? Tentacles. Tentacles. 
Oh, that's it. Okay. Wow. No, no outro or anything. You just, you just, you just stop. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that was the uh, accessibility showcase. I got that wrong. I'll remember that for next year. Um, we got uh, Mythrect, uh, Ambrosia Island. Sky Tales, boss. Actually, actually, I'm gonna wait till the ads finish. We'll we'll chill for a second because there's ads going right now for Twitch. Hang on, we'll just we'll vibe. Okay. So that oh, I'm on the wrong scene. Uh, so that was the accessibility showcase. Uh, we got Mythrect, Ambrosia Island, Sky Tales, boss game. The final boss is my heart. Uh, Space Boat, Spider Elite, Spider, Sniper Elite Five. Uh, a Night in the Attic, VR, uh, Upheaval, uh, Princess Farmer, Botany Manor, Brock the Investigator, Himig, H-I-M-I-G, uh, Soulless State, Pine Hearts, Blink with two N's, The Vacuum of Space, sorry, and The Vacuum of Space, and Stories of Blossom, uh, Blink was also VR. Um, not really a lot of hits for me, you know, nothing, not, not any, of, I don't think any of these, I don't think literally any of these hooked me, um, the one that most, well, that looked most interesting to me was probably Mythrect, but none of them really super hooked me, um, but, like, also I'm not the target audience, because I, I'm not, I don't, you know, I'm not, I, I don't, I, you know, I, so I'm not the target audience for this one. So I, but like still a good showcase. It was, it was nice hearing about it all. I, I learned a couple things about accessibility and stuff that I never really thought about as accessibility. Um, like at one per point, someone pointed out volume sliders and I never really thought about that as an accessibility setting. Um, but it is, uh, so I just, you know, I learned a couple things. Um, but yeah, nothing really hooked me for this one. Uh, still. Good showcase. Still a good showcase. Uh, I hope uh, Laura does this again next year. I hope uh, this was successful enough. Uh, 3,300 views. I hope that's successful enough to validate a uh, follow-up next year. Because this this was really cool. This was a really cool showcase that I, I feel we definitely need. Uh, accessibility very much needs to be a bigger conversation in gaming. Um... So, uh, yeah, I hope we, we get another one next year. But for the first run, pretty fucking good. Pretty good. Pretty good.